Sounds good. Well, good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jason Langoni. I'm part of the federal sales team here at Aviatrix, uh, joined by Hamad Alam, who's one of our uh, principal solution architects. And today we're going to talk about how to overcome some very specific challenges in, in cloud networking. Um, Hamad, you can go ahead and advance this slide. But before we dive in, I wanted to spend maybe a minute or two talking about you know, how your cloud network architecture can be a very, very strategic accelerator in your continued cloud journey. You want to advance this slide again, sir? You know, if we look at why agencies go to the cloud, you know, they go to the cloud, you know, because part of what's involved in, in running a technology branch has been, you know, has been commoditized, you know, the, the racks, power, cooling, you know, even things like, you know, servers and hypervisors and storage, these things have all been commoditized and made commercially available by the cloud service providers. And, and we see some of them here. <clears throat> you know, the, these same cloud providers, you know, they've invested heavily in, in federal to meet the strict requirements of the federal government. Um, and if you kind of look at the landscape today, agencies have, you know, their pick from a growing number of government cloud service providers. You know, again, if you kind of look at, at the cloud providers kind of, you know, as a whole, you realize that they are competitive in nature, right? They compete with each other for their federal business, for their federal footprint. And, and I think, you know, as we kind of get started on this conversation today, one of the most important things to understand is that the way these cloud service providers compete um, isn't by reducing, you know, the cost to compute by a fraction of a percent or the cost to store a terabyte of data, you know, a fraction of a percent per hour. You know, the, the providers are not fighting a, a price war per se, you know, they're fighting a war of innovation. You know, they win footprint by out innovating the other guy. And, you know, if you look at some of these like huge numbers below each of the respective cloud providers, those numbers represent their annual R&D budget. And, and these are, I mean, these are silly numbers, $38 billion for Amazon, $26 billion for Google. And, you know, part of the funding from these R&D budgets goes directly into building, you know, innovative, commercially available, you know, cloud-based technology services. Um, you know, a few examples that maybe come to mind, you know, AWS Lambda, um, Azure Active Directory, Google Auto ML. You know, these are all byproducts of this innovation race uh, amongst these cloud providers to go win footprint. Um, and, and to me, this is why interoperability, you know, should be a key pillar for an agency's cloud strategy. You know, it should be easy for an agency to utilize uh, these services from any of the available cloud providers in order to advance the mission. Uh, but a key foundation for this interoperability is clearly the networking and that's what we're going to spend you know our time together talking about today is is how can networking be a strategic decision you know for your cloud journey ma we can go and advance the slide please you know so what is aviatrix you know i know, you know a lot of folks have never never heard of aviatrix before this might be the first time um you know getting familiar with uh with the company and with the platform uh, Aviatrix at the root of it is a you know multi-cloud uh, network architecture that delivers you know the interoperability we just talked about. You know if you look at this slide here, um, what we're taking a look at is that you know Aviatrix comes in as the platform and the reference architecture you know for your cloud network. You know much like you know Cisco was the reference architecture for your on-prem cloud networks for decades and decades. You know, we need to solve what does that reference architecture look like in the cloud? Um, we also probably recognize that it isn't going to come from, uh, you know, a traditional on-prem solution. It also probably will not come from uh, one of the cloud service providers themselves. You know, someone will need to deliver this capability, you know, in, in a multi-cloud fashion. Uh, you know, and what we're looking at on this slide are, uh, the cloud access layer, the cloud networking layer, the application layer, you know, the, the core layers of any solution within a cloud environment. Uh, 
And where we at Aviatrix fit into the overall picture uh, is multi-cloud transit. You know, so when you're bringing that uh, cloud access layer up from, you know, your on-prem facility or maybe you're in Equinix and you need that encrypted as it enters into the cloud network layer, you know, we pick that up for you and, and encrypt that for you. And then once you're in the cloud network layer, you know, what we then provide are, you know, what I view is all the enterprise capabilities that are typically required for running, you know, your mission in the public cloud. You know, some of these capabilities that you had on-prem, you know, and you lost as you migrated the cloud, some of these capabilities are required just from the inherent complexity uh, of running your applications in the cloud, you know, the networking services, um, you see some of them here, I won't go into all of them, but, you know, the networking services, uh, security services, operational capabilities for, you know, day two and beyond, um, service insertion, you know, all of these things, you know, help allow an agency to move their security perim perimeter um, from on-prem, which is where we've been for decades, um, but extend that security perimeter into the public cloud as well, into that government agency's cloud premise. You know, uh, services that you see here, I'll call out maybe a couple, uh, network segmentation, logging, alerting, um, you know, DevSecOps, uh, forensics in case you do incident response. You know, these are all things that are part of the Aviatrix platform and that we take care of uh, for you, you know, for your agency. You know, and these are typically services you're used to having, again, on-prem, but maybe today you started to move and build in the cloud and, and you've lost some of these capabilities that you know, we kind of took for granted in the on-prem world. Uh, Hamad's gonna dive into these, a couple of these very specifically and how they relate in the, in the government space. Um, but first I just wanted to give a quick overview of, okay, I kind of get a little bit of the problems that Aviatrix solves, but you know, what is it, how does it work? Um, so Hamad, if we could advance to the next slide, I'll go ahead and cover the, the platform quickly. So I think this is a good 30,000 foot view of the, the components of the Aviatrix platform. And, and even before I cover these, I think it's uh, really important to, to understand that philosophically at Aviatrix, uh, you know, we believe that the agency should own their control plane and their data plane. Um, to me, this is, you know, I haven't been in the federal space for a very, very long time. And you know, growing up here in the DC area, I think we understand why that's important uh, to government agencies that they are managing and owning their control plane and, and data plane. So we are not software as a service. We're not a managed offering. You know, these virtual appliances that we'll, we'll cover here in a second are all agency owned and, uh, and operated. And number one, kind of the, the first part and probably the most important part is our, our central brain that we call the controller. Um, our controller is unique in that it talks to our gateway appliances, which you see here, and, and we'll cover here in a minute. Uh, but our controller is also multilingual, um, so it's able to talk to the to the cloud, uh, to the native cloud constructs. Um, it's also you know cloud native, so you're able to interact interact with it with with Terraform. Um, if you're using Python or, or Ansible in house, and you like to do a lot of API interaction. We fully support that as well. So, you know, agencies that are building um, out their cloud infrastructure with this infrastructure as code mindset, you know, that, that's fully supported. And when you look at how do you build at scale, typically that's where agencies turn. Like, how do we do this with, with intelligent code versus, um, you know, lots and lots and lots of, of, of human interaction and manual clicks. Uh, another thing that's important to mention, kind of looking at the bigger picture, uh, is that the controller also supports um, full service insertion and chaining. It talks to your Palo, it talks to Checkpoint, Fortinet, you know, these virtual appliances that you have deployed in the cloud as well. Aviatrix uh, orchestrates, automates, and keeps those configurations up to date as well. Uh, so we've got the central brain, which we covered, which is the controller. You know, the controller talks to the gateways, which essentially are, are the workhorses. Um, the gateways, which are uh, represented by the number two here, are doing all the routing, the protocols, the segmentation, um, you know, some of the capabilities Hamad's gonna cover here uh, in the next couple of slides. All that work is done 
is done by the gateways um, by the direction of, of the controller. Uh, the gateways are essentially compute instances with, um, with our software. They live in you know, things like EC2 if you're in AWS or compute instances in, in Azure, GCP, or even OCI. And then the, the fourth uh, piece, and, and maybe the most important, one of the most important pieces is what we call Copilot. And, and here you see three screenshots from, from Copilot, which is our visibility platform. Um, it's what delivers you know, essentially cloud network situational awareness. You know, it allows agencies to, um, to understand where their cloud assets reside, you know, how they're connected, how they're plumbed together. And not just from, you know, an exec perspective, which, you know, I would say is maybe that, that top screenshot that you see there, um, but also from a, you know, DevOps perspective, a DevSecOps perspective, topology maps for, you know, those looking at it from an architectural perspective, but also if, you know, something hits the fan and you need to troubleshoot, right? It's important to be able to, to step in and immediately, assuming you've got the right roles and permissions, be able to quickly assess what's going on in your cloud environment you know, to, um, you know, troubleshoot, you know, something that's slow, troubleshoot an outage, or maybe there's been an incident that's been logged and you need to do some kind of, um, you know, deep forensics on, on that as well. You know, all of these things are capabilities that Copilot, which is, you know, number four here on the screen, brings to the table. Um, so now that we've kind of covered it at a, at a high level, I wanted to turn it over to Hamad to dive into various, a couple of very specific capabilities and use cases for, uh, government agencies. So, Hamad, sir, with sure. that, I will pass the baton. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate it. All right, guys, thanks for joining again. Uh, so, Jason gave us a, a great intro and in, in a perfect position to kind of take the next uh, 25, 30 minutes to dive in and look at a couple of capabilities. So, one of the things that I would, you know, just uh, highlight here uh, in the capability Jason mentioned about, you know, the a controller, which is being, which is a central control plane, and why that is important. So, if you look at, you know, how cloud providers have built the cloud, right? It's very much so like, um, you know, Lego pieces, right? So, uh, let's take an example of AWS, right? So, you have AWS. If you think from networking perspective, AWS gives you a VPC. It gives you subnets, it gives you route tables, it gives you associations, it gives you a NAT gateway, a IGW, it gives you attachments and VGWs and, and all these different things. And I'm just talking about a single VPC, right? But it's up to the customer to put all these Lego pieces together and build something meaningful, right? So you can, you, you, yeah, first time I'm doing it. Yeah, it's, it's fun and games, it's something learning that I'm doing. So I'm having fun and I like it. But if I have to do it twice and thrice and 50 times and 100 times, and then I have to also worry about how do I interconnect them. And then I also have to worry about that all of these VPCs are not gonna be owned or created by my account that I have all privileges to do things in it. They'll be owned by different agencies, different teams, different application owners, different units uh, within the organization or external organization. And I and you are the network service provider, right? So we need to take into account how can I build infrastructure, which is cross account, multi-account, multi-account, not just in a single cloud. Now I have, Gulf Cloud, which is a separate IAM identity. I have commercial AWS Cloud, which is separate IAM. Then I have Azure and I have Azure Gov that don't have accounts, they have subscriptions. And if you extend into GCP and OCI, they have their own constructs. And then a VPC in AWS is a VNet in Azure. So Azure doesn't have you know, the same way of doing things as AWS. So now I have to worry about system routes and UDRs and, and the way NAT is done is different. Every instance that's spun up has default access to the internet. So how do I you know, prevent that from you know, egressing natively? How do I connect these VNets and VPCs together? I mean, if you just kind of, you know, uh, start realizing at the, at the infrastructure level, all the things that you have to worry about, it's just a lot. 
to do manually in your own head, trying to piece all these things together. So that's where Aviatrix comes in. And what we're talking about here is to provide a unified control plane. So the unified control plane says that these individual clouds, they look similar, but they're not same, right? They have you know, very advanced capabilities, but they are not the same and they are not built to interoperate with each other. However, as a consumer, as a you know, agency or enterprise, you need to be able to treat these things similarly because you're going to build VPCs and VNets and provide this uh, infrastructure to your application teams and other agencies to start consuming. So what that means is I need a control plane that understands the nitty gitties and differences of all these clouds, number one. Number two, it is able to build in these clouds. It's able to give me as a consumer, a simplified view of the cloud, not the complex view of the cloud. And on top of that, the team, the team members that I have, that will be operating these clouds, they are seasoned professional. They're network engineers, security architect, infrastructure people with decades of experience, but that experience is on-prem. The cloud lingo and way of doing things is very different. So how do I make it so that I can, you know, port the skill set of my people from on-prem to the cloud world, right? So these are all the challenges that the Aviatrix is solving for our customers. So a unified control plane, it allows you to build a repeatable architecture. And that's a, a very, very key uh, value prop if you really think about it. Because as I said, every cloud is different. How do I treat them similarly? How do I build them so that I'm not building snowcorns and, and uh, snowflakes and unicorns because, uh, with everything being different? So Aviatrix architecture is exact same way of building, whether you're in a commercial cloud, whether you're in a Gov cloud, whether it's a AWS Gov cloud or Azure Gov cloud or commercial cloud or GCP or OCI. And then you have the option to connect them with each other or air gap them as you need, right? So the repeatable architecture is a very important thing. If you think about how we built on-prem designs or environments, right? That's what we did. When you had to define a rack, you said a rack will be 16 hosts, two port each, two power, you know, two top of the rack or whatever you, you, you designed. And that's the same thing that you rinsed and repeated over and over again whether you are in single data center or multiple data centers, right? So that's the repeatable architecture that Aviatrix brings in the cloud. Now, building with basic connectivity is good, but that's not enough. What you need is you need advanced traffic engineering. You need you know, route management. You need control. You need the ability to you know, steer traffic the way that you want. You, probably don't want the Gov cloud traffic to be treated the same way as a commercial cloud, right? You want to exert control. How would you do that without having to go do all of that manually, right? That's where Aviatrix comes in and the control plane provides advanced traffic engineering, you know, capabilities around netting, isolation, air gapping, right? And then all the things that we build behind the scene the complexity is there because the complexity is coming from the cloud provider. But what we are doing is we are making your interface simple. So for you, it's like a one click build, but behind the scene, we are automating the build, the route table management, the orchestration, the data plane, encryption, all of those things are happening. It's just that the pain is not you know, transferred to you. For you, it's simplified. And of course you can, you know, build simple, but build simple, just connect everything is not not, not the, the ultimate requirement. You need security. Uh, by security, I mean inserting next gen firewall. You need segmentation, air gapping, encryption, right? All of these are the necessary needs and maybe basic necessities for building any of you know, secure environments in the cloud. 
And then the traffic is not only for the cloud, you have on-prem coming in, you have users connecting in, you have sites or branches or locations coming in, right? How do you secure those? And then you have new types of workload. You have, you know, AWS Outpost on and Azure Stack and, and, and uh, Google Anthos, like all these kind of new capabilities are being rolled out, which are new now, but in six months or a year, they will be the norm. How do you cater those in as well? So Aviatrix keeps up with the you know, CSP innovation. So you don't have to go back and build it in-house, right? Aviatrix is a partner that you can rely on to you know, keep up with the innovation and build that into or bake that into the control plane. And last but not least, whatever you do, if it doesn't have eyes and ears, operational visibility and capability, then it's not really good enough, right? So everything that Aviatrix does has lots of capabilities from day to operations perspective built in. And, you know, in a nutshell, you know, I would say Aviatrix brings three things. You know, it brings traffic engineering for, for, for networks, it brings control for security, and it brings eyes and ears for operations. So these are, you know, three key uh, benefits that Aviatrix brings for enterprises and agencies in the cloud. So once you translate the the, the picture that I showed into a you know real world environment, uh, a full scale deployment would look like this, which is a very repeatable in you know multiple regions, multiple clouds, fully connected with high performance encryption, with next gen firewalls with on-prem sites and locations connecting in. And if you have SD-WAN or other types of stuff, all of that fully connected is typically what, you know, a, an enterprise deployment at scale is gonna look like. So, and, and uh, you know, uh, I know that this is a one way, like an audio from, uh, from audio perspective, but please keep the Q and A uh, coming in if you have any questions and we'll, we'll take that uh, along the way or at the end as well. So, now let me transition because we only have you know a very short time today, so we won't be able to talk about all the capabilities that Aviatrix brings in in networking, security, operations, and and control, right? So we talked about the repeatable architecture. So from a security focus perspective, what you need are repeatable architecture. So it's one design that is approved by the architecture board and agencies and, and security and compliance and governance uh, aspects. And that's the one that's not, not just a single cloud design, it's a design that is applicable and available in every cloud. Then you need the ability for line of businesses or agencies to build environments in you know silos and air gapped, and then you decide, or they, you let them decide which environments are able to communicate with each other. So by default, everything is zero trust, right? So nothing can talk to each other unless it's explicitly allowed. So it's a DMZ anywhere concept. And all the traffic is always fully encrypted. And as I said, you know, operations is definitely the key thing that we focus on. So in the next few slides, I want to talk specifically from a security perspective. There are a lot of innovations uh, by Aviatrix in, for security in the cloud, but I'm going to pick on two specific aspects. One is encryption, and the second is inserting next-gen firewalls, uh, and all of this from a more compliance perspective. And then um, hopefully we'll have some uh, time for a quick demo into operations aspect, right? So let's start from you know the compliance aspect and encryption becomes key right because cloud is something that you don't own right so everything in the cloud from a trust perspective has to be encrypted so that's the first checkbox from compliance if the data plane is not encrypted then it's not something that you can use right so from architecture perspective, you think about access layer is where your on-prem environments are. The transit is where the Aviatrix transit is sitting and then app, apps are where your VPCs and VNets would be. So if you really look at this, it's a, that I have on-prem connecting in and I have spoke by default, this path here 
which is you know AWS Direct Connect or Azure Express Route or Google Interconnect, all of these are not encrypted by default. And if you go to encrypt any of these, you will be limited to 1.2 gig throughput only. So it doesn't matter how what's the size of the hardware you got or firewall or a router, you won't be able to do more than 1.2 gig encryption on direct connect to the cloud. That's native limitation of the cloud. So when this data path is not encrypted, this data path may be going through, you know, Equinix or some other provider, right? So you have to, you must encrypt this. And then in the cloud as well, when your data at, at rest is probably encrypted with EBS and all those other things, but your inter VPC traffic is not encrypted. So how do you encrypt that, right? So these are some of the challenges that we, you know, we, we solve and this helps customers achieve compliance very, very fast without compromising on performance. So what we provide is within the cloud, for example, in AWS, you, for interspoke traffic, you can get upwards of 70 gig of encrypted throughput. And for on-prem, we give line rate encryption. So if you have 110 gig or you have 100 gig, we provide line rate encryption from on-premise to cloud. So right off the gate, it is fully encrypted at high speed. So no performance, uh, you know, no sacrificing the performance while achieving compliance for encryption. And this is not in one cloud. Again, repeatable architecture, same thing is available in let's say in Azure. And what about when you're connecting these clouds, you get line rate encryption when you connect these clouds because depend on the cloud provider, the location, the region and other things, they may pro, uh, offer different kind of egress throughput. So that's why it just says line rate. It depends on you know what your provider provides, but Aviatrix will encrypt all of that data and it would be fully encrypted at line rate. Now there's one additional capability that I wanna highlight here is that the native cloud, if you are using native cloud, uh, let's say AWS TGW or Azure Express Route Gateway, they offer very limited number of routes. So for example, AWS only allows 20, just 20 seeders to be advertised from cloud to on-prem. No enterprise can run on 20 seeders forever, right? You, you, you'll run out of that. You can't summarize enough especially in an agency situation where you may not control all the seeders. People may have already started using and defining their own seeders. So Aviatrix, at the same time that we overcome the encryption, we overcome this very important limitation of number of routes. And we literally provide unlimited number of routes being advertised between on-prem and cloud. And as I mentioned, you know, cloud to cloud, inter-cloud, intra-cloud, all of that's covered. The next piece I want to talk about is inserting next gen firewalls. Again, you know, just basic connectivity is never enough, right? As again, I'm going to take example of it, Azure Express Route. If you are doing, you know, inter VNet traffic via Express Route Gateway, it is any to any full open communication. Same thing with AWS TGW. All the VPCs on TGW are fully connected with each other by default, right? And if you want to air gap them, it's very hard. Uh, you have to manually stitch route tables together and inserting firewalls have a lot of limitations. So Aviatrix overcomes those limitations. We provide, you know, a scale out architecture for firewalls, like 20 firewalls and even more if you want, right? And full throughput of these firewalls. We help deploy these firewalls. So some of the most commonly deployed firewalls that we see is Checkpoint, Palo Alto, Fortinet. But if you have any other vendor, that works as well. All the traffic is, again, active-active. All the firewalls are encrypted. We handle the load balancing of the firewall. There's no asymmetry. We overcome the native limitation of 500 meg per firewall up to like 6 or 10 gig, whatever the firewall vendor provides. There's no SNAT, so you always have full visibility. You have capability of taking packet captures, log, troubleshooting, 
then you can segment the environment. For example, you can call these as prod and these as dev, and you can say, hey, prod to prod is okay to go, but prod to dev needs to go through a firewall, right? All of these capabilities. And then I just showed you a simple diagram. There are so many different ways of doing it. This is where you expand that and say, well, you know what? I wanna have a separate fire set of firewalls for east-west and a separate set of firewalls for ingress and egress, right? For, for traffic that may have to go out to the internet or come in from the internet, right? All of these capabilities are taken care of. And from a compliance perspective, if you go and use native cloud, you know all the configuration is just in the cloud. How do you do config management, right? So Aviatrix has a single provider for all the cloud. And it is excellent for config management because you're not doing anything manually. It is fully embedded into your infrastructure as code. So all the config changes, all the configs can be approved via the policies that you already have in your environment. So from a config management perspective, it's you know faster compliance checkbox all the time. And then you need auditability, you know, Again, for compliance, how are you going to validate what you said is, is what's happening, right? So we have, you know, detailed and very strong integration with a lot of, you know, compliance enabled partners like Splunk, Datadog, Sumo Logic, uh, Amazon CloudWatch and NetFlow. And we can, you know, do all of these things for if stuff that's happening in the cloud. And the beauty here is simplified and single control plane. So you don't have to worry about doing it differently in Gov Cloud versus commercial cloud versus AWS or Azure or GCP. All of them will come to you in, in the native same format. So you know whatever integration that you're doing, it's consistent, right? So that's a huge benefit, again, to achieve faster compliance. Jason mentioned, you know, if you remember the, the diagram with the four different components, Copilot is, is the visibility arm of the Aviatrix platform. And even if I'm able to build all the things that I showed you, if I don't have eyes and ears, then it's of no use, to be honest with you, right? So where are the eyes and ears? And let me take a quick, uh, you know, a detour and show you a demo of, of uh, a Copilot environment, right? So, if I go in um, here, uh, let me just move this over. So Copilot will give you, you know, topology. So this is dynamically built topology, which is available to you all the time. So what that means is you, there's no more maintaining visual diagrams and stuff, right? We will build all this topology automatically all the time for you. and we will build so in this environment as you can see i have presence in us gov east as you can see here right i have presence in azure south central and these environments are connected with each other now i have other environment which has you know presence in aws us west commercial azure us east commercial and oci and these are fully segmented and isolated environments from this environment, right? And I have full visibility in what's going on. I know exactly the latency that's happening between these environments. I see the instances, I see the topology. I have, you know, some GCP topology that's fully isolated as well. And this is not just a pretty picture. I can go in here and click on any of these entities and do diagnostic. So if I want to see, hey, from here, can I do like, you know, can I reach a specific destination or trace route? I can do all of that from here. So as an example, I'll just pick this uh, for, for time. And I can see that, for example, this gateway has, you know, access to this destination or not. So from a operations perspective, this is what where the skill set thing also comes in. Your existing operations team are able to use this. This doesn't require any specific cloud knowledge, right? And all of this is fully searchable. So for example, if I have something in 10.1. whatever, right? I don't know in this environment where that is. And I can quickly search and see, oh, there, there's some 10.1 in GCP in, in, in this area, right? And similarly, I can pick you know, different environments. 10.18 is here and is an example, right? So if 
I look at this, I have a quick overview. I can go into the latency monitoring and I can see the latencies. I can see how each environment is, is looking. I can see spikes. I can see exactly what's going on in the environment. Then, you know, Flow IQ shows you what is happening from a traffic perspective. So in this environment, I have you know, a couple of websites. You know, so this instance lives in Azure, right? And I'm trying to hit a couple of sites which live in Gulf Cloud. So I have two different spokes with two different systems running. One has public access, the, uh, this one has public access. This one is completely private. It has no access to the internet. And I'm able to hit this from the Azure environment that I just showed you, right? So from here, I think uh, my system is li lives here and I can hit the two web servers that live here. So from Azure to AWS Gov seamless. You can't even tell that where they live because they're fully connected seamlessly and all the data plane is fully encrypted. And if I want to go look in Flow IQ, I already created a filter for this, where the destination could be either of these two systems where the website is running on port 80. I can see exactly who's talking to these guys. So this is the, the window system I showed you and how much data it's uh, transferred on what port protocol and everything. And once you build these filters, you can save them or you and then you can pull them up later. You can you know, do it on a timeline basis. You can look at trends, for example, you know, this is the trend of that. Let me actually clear this so you can see everything else that's going on in the environment. So you can see here that, you know, I had a spike. So I can come in and see what happened here, right? Who's talking, who was doing something and I can quickly check, you know, what port protocol are the, the major consumer of this. Then you can go geolocation, which is I think very important for 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 agencies to see you know the instances who are they talking to. For example, in my environment, I have something coming from Cheshire, and I don't even know who's talking to this. And I can in a second tell, oh, I have these four systems, uh, actually two systems talking to these two IPs for NTP. Looks like I have NTP servers running in here, which I should not, right? So in a matter of seconds, out of thousands of in, uh, of uh, instances in the cloud, you can see who's talking to who and where that information is going and coming from, right? So again, very, very uh, strong capabilities. Um, then there's a lot of other things, right? You can look at the Senki chart from flows. You can look at records for a specific uh, information, how things are moving. You can look at the performance of the environment, performance of controller and gateways. You can look at all the routes. You can look at, you know, if you have any sites connecting in, if you have any BGP coming in in this environment, I don't have any BGP, but you can look at the BGP ASNs. You can uh, sorry, as uh, coming up to time, so I'll I'll just speed through some of the other things. For example, you have App IQ, which allows you to pick instances and see what traffic is going between these instances. So I just ran uh, a report before uh, our call started, so it would build a topology like this, where you can say, "Hey, this source is trying to go to this destination, and what path is it taking?" And in that path, which links are down, which are up, what are the latencies? Then it also shows you the performance along the path, shows you the flow information. It shows you analysis of all the NACLs and security groups and route tables at source and destination. It tells you exactly which security group is missing the rules and routes. And all of those things can be exported as a PDF. I can click on this and you know, it's gonna generate a PDF for me that I can export and share with my operations team and, and you know, work quickly to resolve the problems, right? So there's a lot of capabilities in here and uh, you know, we're, we're short on time, so I'm not gonna you know, go deeper, but uh, hopefully that gave you at least a high level overview of some of the capabilities that the Aviatrix platform brings to you. Jason, over to you. Awesome, thank you, thank you, sir. Very much appreciate it. Um, you know, so as we kind of start to wrap here, you know, as we've seen today, um, 
Aviatrix delivers, you know, critical capabilities to, you know, to your agency's cloud infrastructure and things like operational visibility for monitoring, you know, or troubleshooting when something hits the fan, um, compliance and governance, which clearly is, is a critical requirement, the ability to audit and provide detailed flow analysis, um, an increased security posture, uh, and not just an increased security posture, but a, a posture with you know, even better performance uh, as it relates to encryption. Um, and, and finally, you know, time to mission, uh, making it easier to deploy, you know, as Hamad mentioned, kind of abstracting the pain and complexity of, of the underlying cloud networking constructs, but also the ability to tap into that innovation race, that innovation layer that we talked about earlier by having true, you know, commercial and government cloud network interoperability. Um, let me go to the next slide, Ahmad, please. Um, you know, a couple of quick things I just wanted to, to bring to your attention as, as we kind of enter the home stretch here. Uh, the first is that Aviatrix is available um, in commercial cloud, you know, all the commercial clouds, uh, GovCloud, as well as the um, intelligence community marketplace. So again, you could log in today, you could log in right now and launch Aviatrix to solve an immediate problem, an immediate pain point uh, that you're feeling today. Um, you know, clearly things like high performance encryption, um, integration with Palo Alto, FQDN-based egress filtering. You know, these are some of the common ones where people go in search of trying to find, you know, relief to a pain point that they're currently experiencing or complexity they would really like to avoid. And they find, you know, they somehow find Aviatrix, they launch um, transit, they launch the platform, and they solve that immediate problem. And, you know, over time, they, they embrace the multi-cloud network architecture. Um, here you see there's a site here. We're happy to help anyone launch. You can go in and, and schedule um, your, your essentially assisted launch that we call launch control on the federal team, where we've got an engineer who, with a couple hours notice, could, could walk you through getting your... Aviatrix, Aviatrix environment, you know, up and running within your own cloud premise. Then uh, next slide, please. Now, the other thing that I, I think is important to mention is uh, we've got a certification program called ACE, uh, which stands for Aviatrix Certified Engineer. There's a couple of different levels of it, uh, but we're over 8,000 ACEs worldwide now, which is uh, a little mind boggling, honestly. Uh, we had a press release that came out, I wanna say it was about a month ago, four to six weeks ago, um, celebrating our 5,000th ACE, uh, which is a, a fantastic achievement for the company and for our education and, and marketing teams. Um, but the interesting thing to me is in the time it took to get that press release approved, we added roughly another 3,000 ACEs worldwide. Um, before I joined Aviatrix, you know, earlier this spring, um, I myself went through ACE. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in the, you know, the educational uh, services that are offered. Um, we've got the ability to do it instructor-led, which is, which is what I did. Honestly, I thought it was fantastic. Um, they're self-paced for those that maybe can't, uh, ha you know, have a, a tighter schedule they've got to manage. Um, but again, I, I highly encourage you know, if, if what you've seen today is interesting and you'd like to, to learn more and, and uh, even if you're just looking to understand cloud networking a little bit better, I think the ACE program is, is again, I think it's a, it's a great asset um, and I'm happy to help anybody get, get scheduled if you need help. It's just Jason at aviatrix.com. Um, and then Hamad, I think we can move on. I think that's, that's it for, from a content perspective. Um, Rod and team, I believe we could open it up to QA at this time. So Hamad, did you see any questions that you thought were uh, interesting for the the team? Yeah, I think there's uh, one question I think that's important and, and Jason just covered, which is the availability of the platform. So you know, it's available in the in the marketplaces. So, uh, Jason, do you want to just quickly talk about uh, how people can get started from just uh, marketplace if they wanted to try stuff on their own? 
Yeah, absolutely. Like if, if you're more of a do it yourself kind of person, docs.aviatrix.com is a, is a wonderful asset, you know, in the public domain available to anybody. Um, clearly you could walk yourself through a launch if you wanted to go that way, you would, you know, you would go to your respective marketplace. You know, the two most common are clearly Azure and AWS, um, and you could launch Aviatrix from there. Um, again, if you were like any assistance, you know, either shoot in, shoot me an email or reach out, um, you know, to the URL that was shown earlier and we can get you scheduled. Uh, the nice thing I will say about scheduling the launch is, you know, we've got a pre-rec kind of checklist, pre-launch checklist that we could send you um, just to make sure we're ready to go and, um, you know, and the launch is as successful as possible. Um, but yeah, again, it's available, you know, C2S, uh, GovClouds, you know, the commercial marketplaces, um, you know, everywhere pretty much that you might want to launch this thing. There's one another question again uh, around uh, training uh, for for teams. I think uh, uh, one one thing, as as Jason mentioned, the A certification program is available, uh, and the self paced is something that a lot of people really like uh, to 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 take advantage of. So if you go to aviatrix.com/ace. Uh, there's a, a self-paced uh, module available, and, and right now it's available for free, so you can sign up with the code there and take some time at your own pace to learn about Aviatrix and also just public cloud networking. So ACE associate program is built in a way where half of the program is just core public cloud networking. And then how does Aviatrix solve some of those challenges, right? So um, that's uh, like about a five, six hours uh, training program that's available for free. And, and that probably would be a good place uh, for you to start if you want to just, you know, kind of scale up and, and, and also share within your own team uh, operations and other people to, who are starting on the journey or to cloud. I think uh, that covers all the questions that we had. Uh, the last one I was going to throw in since it's recorded and we can go back and look is uh, Hamad Super Bowl prediction. Who's winning the Super Bowl? <laughs> I'm more interested in, in what's going on right now on the TV. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, well, if, if that's it for questions, um, I certainly thank everyone who, who dialed in today. And if you're watching this on a replay, thanks for your time. Um, Hamad, Rod, Vicky, thank you everyone for, for making this happen. Um, this was uh, officially our first federal webinar. And, and, and uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. There's a lot of great uh, web resources. There's training. You know, we're clearly Santa Mai to assist as well. So, so please don't hesitate. All right. Thanks, everyone. Awesome.